Seems like it's going to be awfully hard to do with your eyes closed, don't you think? Ooh. Is that five rest sites? One, two, three, four, five. Hmm. And three elites along the way. That's pretty powerful. Later, we're going to be playing a golf sim turned roguelike called Cursed to Golf, which I think uh, a few people will find pretty interesting. Searing Blow Run. Yeah, I'm down. Just give me one. So in this situation, I think any of the options are good, actually. All four of these choices are, are great for different reasons. With no planned interaction with a shop here in Act 1, we're quite happy to take a rare colorless card in exchange for our money. That could be something like a Hand of Greed, which could pay off hugely. Uh, although it could also be, say, an Apotheosis, which would be good, but would kind of counteract five rest sites. Now, we could avoid a couple of them, but it would be a little awkward, to be sure. This entire climb is just a, a sleepwalking incident. So what, what regular colorless cards would I like? Dark Shackles, Panic Button, Trip, Swift Strike. I'm in a mood for something a little bit off the beaten path, so I'm going to take a colorless card. And we do, in fact, get Panic Button. I'll take Panic Button. Panic Button is a big misunderstood card. It says, gain 30 block. You cannot gain block from cards for two turns. Now, you might think that means your two next turns, but what it actually means is the turn that you... This turn, a.k.a. the turn you just played Panic Button on, and next turn. There's only one turn of actual block downside. And if any character is in a position to take advantage of a lot of block very suddenly for zero energy, it's going to be the Watcher. One of those two. Could avoid this fire if I feel the need, but I probably won't. We're going to get a lot of upgrades here. So our goal this run, or this act, is going to be to grab a couple of damage cards, upgrade the Eruption, upgrade the damage cards, maybe upgrade the Panic Button. And if we're lucky, we can remove... One defend, too. Well, that's not the correct time to draw a panic button. Hmm. Definitely going to take some damage next turn. Got a miracle to get in calm here. I bring you down to 21. Strikes... This will be 699, nine. so I need to bring you below 25 if I want to be able to kill them back one next turn. Let's see if that ends up working out. Yep, that'll do. Take five. Early Tantrum. Puts us in Wrath, deals damage a bunch of times, and then shuffles itself into the draw pile. An early Tantrum can absolutely be a fantastic way to get your damage started on Watcher. Isn't the Panic Button upgrade overkill for now? Kind of. Uh, I think for Watcher it won't be, because... One, one of the big things that Panic Button is going to allow us to do is block when we're in Wrath Stance. And so, any enemy that does up to 20 damage on their turn, we want to be able to block that in its entirety with a, a 40 block. So normally I would say yes, there's no, there's no normal enemy attack that really hits for more than 30 for quite a while. But because of Wrath Stance, the extra block could totally be relevant for us. There's also a Pressure Points here, which I'm not going to take, but it's here. It's here. 24-4. Welcome back to the sub status. Four months of Prime Sub. Thank you for that. Ooh, here's a good attack to upgrade. As is Bowling Bash. Bowling Bash hitting multiple foes could actually be a really nice answer to Slime Boss. How much damage does Gremlin Wizard do? Base of 35 on Ascension 20. Ray Delbano, speaking of, thank you for 35 months of support. One more to three full years. 
When in doubt, I think personally Wheel Kick is incredible. One, we have a zero cost card to draw into. Two, it does big damage. And three, it's got card draw. You gotta love card draw. All right, we'll bank some energy. I'm gonna Miracle Strike Strike here. And then when we draw the Tantrum, we should be able to kill. Or the turn after, rather. We'll Tantrum Strike. Next turn, Wheel Kick does 30 damage. That, my friends, is a big bonk. Flying Sleeves is takeable. Actually, Evaluate is oddly takeable, too. If I had a Defend removal, I'd probably take an Evaluate. As it is, I think I'll skip all these. I'm really happy to see all these fires here in Act 1. I think the Watcher does value upgrades, especially attack card upgrades, more than the other characters, since you're able to multiply the upgrade on your attack cards with your stances, specifically Wrath and Divinity stance. So Wheel Kick, for example, gets plus 5 damage when upgraded, but if you're in Wrath, that's plus 10 goes from 30 to 40, and that is pretty dang enormous. Gold for a curse, with no shop coming up. At least none that I intend on visiting. Stinky Serpent, be gone. I think I'll take one more event here. We've seen our three easy pool fights. This will be a hard pool. I've got a decent potion. I just want another event. Match and keep. We're offered an establishment. Interesting. There's always six pairs of matching cards here. On Ascension 20, that's two pairs of curses, one starter card, one common card, one uncommon card, and one rare card. Note that the two pairs of curses, so four total curses, there can be four identical curses if they randomly roll the same as one another. So there might be four copies of Writhe, and that means that even though I have seen one writhe already, I might get cursed with a writhe if I click on a new card here, because there could be four of them. Which means I should click on the establishment again, which was the first card, right? Yeah, I believe it was. Good. Protect? I'd be okay with a protect, especially if there's also an establishment in it for me. I can take establishment, protect together. That seems kind of cool. Let's do it. I don't know if that's actually helpful. But I like it. And a Nirvana. I don't want a Nirvana. He disappeared. So, you get one card. Retain, gain 12 block. I think Protect's a pretty reasonable card overall, but when it comboed with Establishment, it can do some really interesting things. Establishment says, if a card is retained, reduce its cost by one for the whole combat. That means when you draw it again, it'll still be discounted. Yeah, somehow, somehow the deck got worse. It definitely got worse at beating Gremlin Knob, let me tell you. But that's what the Wheel Kick upgrade is for. Hollywood, thanks for 27 months of support. And we get the, the best of the elites, too. A Lagavulin will give us a couple turns to set up. That includes getting our establishment in play, getting our protect into hand. Um, don't want to play Wheel Kick now, do I? I don't think I do. So here's the thing. If I enter Wrath Stance... I might absolutely get bonk next turn. Although there's panic button. We'll be fine. Particularly one cost as well. Thanks to establishment. Perfect, just draw the vigilance. Easy. Tantrum, miracle, vigilance protect. No problem. Ouch. 
It's a really unfortunate draw order there. It's to not get either the wheel kick or the panic button. We really wanted both of those. Not neither of them. Entering uh, Wrath there seems pretty unconscionable to me. So I shan't be doing it. Oof. I don't really want to draw the tantrum again, huh? But I do want to deal double damage with Eruption. This would be 8. Plus 14, plus 3. 25? Not the right number, that's for sure. I can't even play it all. But I want to get back into Calm. So we'll play the Eruption. The Vigilance. The Protect. This together kills next turn. Okay. Really unfortunate draw order cost us some of our health here, but overall this turned out just fine. We get Cloak Clasp, further encouraging us to pick up cards that say Retain. Cloak Clasp says at the end of each of our turns, gain one block for every card in hand. And that's a mighty good thing. That's right, Storm. Establishment will work with uh, well aid plans or the defect card Equilibrium if you manage to get your hands on either of them. But it doesn't work with Runic Pyramid. Runic Pyramid is not retain, even though you really feel like it ought to be. How does Cloak Class play with Oracalcum? The way you want it to. As a general rule, Oracalcum will work perfectly alongside any other end of turn effect, such as Plated Armor, Frost Orbs, the Cloak Clasp, Feel No Pain from Exhausting Cards in Your Hand, all of that stuff. Oracalcum is highly, highly cooperative with. Could consider a Reach Heaven an in or an Indignation here. I think we just want to... I mean, Crescendo technically retains, but I don't think that's a good enough reason to pick it here. Already got a Tantrum. I'm going to skip all three of these. We're going to upgrade two more cards. I really do want to upgrade Eruption. Let's get that upgraded first. Am I looking for Smites? Yes, I would love Smites. We can now ignore rooms, uh, paths when choosing the next room to travel to several times. That could allow me to visit this shop for one wing boots charge or allows me to do many other silly things in the future. Two very good rare relics so far on this run. Pretty promising. Upgraded establishment has the innate keyword, meaning it'll always be drawn on turn one. I do think upgraded establishment can be quite good if you've got a lot of retaining stuff, uh, but it's not always an upgrade that you want. I usually have pretty mixed feelings about innate upgrades on cards. Acheron, thanks for 11 months, one till that full year. Let's see, now we upgrade what? Tantrum? Tantrum upgrade looks pretty good. We can also consider upgrading our block card. The protect upgrade is pretty good. Maybe we'll do that next. All right, no Gremlin Knob for us. It's instead the three sentries who shall be attacked today. Could use our Miracle here, although know that we're somewhat disincentivized to do so because the Miracle... So we're fighting Slime Boss. Yeah, this will be a long enough fight. The Miracle is one extra card in hand, which is one extra block. So we get five block from the defend, plus six block from cloak clasp, equals fully defended against. Cloak clasp in general is going to be a ton of defense. Just a buttload. Pretty tempting to kill one with tantrum here. Could go protect, defend, simply full block, but that doesn't get me anywhere, right? We need to kill stuff. So I'm thinking something like tan eruption, tantrum, miracle, protect. Take relatively little damage this turn. We take five or so. And then we're set up very well for next turn. I get to Tantrum and Vigilance. Yeah, so let's go... Eruption here. Tantrum here. Thank you, upgraded Tantrum. Miracle, Protect, lock three more, take five. Shame to lose that Miracle, but I think we needed to. Now here we Tantrum first, dealing 24 damage. 
Bringing it down to 11, which is a guaranteed kill next turn with Tantrum. Play Vigilance, take nothing this turn. Then kill you. And hopefully we don't take 20 damage next turn. We don't, because guess what? We drew Panic Button. Gain 30 block. Can't gain block from cards for two turns. And note that phrasing, from cards. Cloak Clasp is not a card, and so it still gives us block. Five on this turn as well. And note that this is the only turn where we're not able to block with the cards in hand. Two turns after playing the Panic Button, we can block anew. So I can defend with Vigilance here if I want to. Works with orbs too, yes. Yes, it does. We get a Mob Bank giving us money per floor we climb. I guess the shop is not on the menu. Energy Potion. And I'm pretty happy with a Fear No Evil to put us into Calm Stance here. It's no retaining card, but it is definitely nice with two Wrath Sources. Works with Ironclad's Rage card as well, that's right. Any any card that gives you block by virtue of adding a status effect on your character works with uh, Panic Button. So any power that generates block is still going to work. After Image, Feel No Pain, Metallicize... Mental Fortress. All of that is going to work still. Tranquility does have Retain on it, which does give it a little bit of value. Don't think we have enough card draw for that to be worthwhile yet. I think we want another attack card. And that attack card is going to be Fear No Evil. I do think, however, that I'm going to upgrade my Protect now. Get this block card to be extra juicy so that we have premium defense available when we wish it. And I think we're going to end up just keeping all three Wing Boots charges for now. We're going to continue along the intended path here. Agree, Carissa. So the, the rule of thumb I like to keep in mind, uh, and another way to phrase this, you can treat Panic Button as minus infinity dexterity. Otherwise phrased, if a card benefits from dexterity, it won't work with Panic Button. If dexterity does not affect the block source, and there are many, many, many blocks that don't get affected by Dexterity, then Panic Button 2 will not stop it. Yacht 2 says, Can any character find Cloak Clasp? No, this is a Watcher-only relic. Can only find this on the Watcher. Alright, I'll upgrade Protect. Or we can upgrade Panic Button. Maybe I'll do that for Slime Boss. Or maybe I'll upgrade the card I get from this Elite. Yeah, it's not worth using two, two Wing Boots charges to get one more Elite, especially not if that Elite costs me my Rest Sight. Greetings! Lice Nerds. That's an intimidating array of damage numbers. You've got there. Eight, eight, six, sixteen, twenty-two. Okay, so with Cloak Class, we're full blocking. Could use the Miracle to break the curl up on one of them, and I think I should. Let's bring you to nine. So that Eruption will kill you in one hit. Again, missing out on that one block per turn of having the Miracle, but I think that's still worthwhile. One of my favorite things about the Cloak Class, you can essentially treat it as uh, any sort of card draw as a block card now. We should take one. That way we can guarantee we kill this front louse. Although this one's guaranteed to buff, right? So I have Vigilance Defend. Hmm. Or not buff. This one's going to make me weak. Uh, and basically, I'm debating whether I need to take one damage here. I actually don't think that I do. I've got Panic Button. Oh, you're right. I just do this then. Since this one's guaranteed to debuff. Definitely didn't need to take one. Double wheel kick. Interesting. I actually rather rather like more wheel kicks with uh, 
one with the cloak clasp. And two, if we're encouraged to pick up retain cards, then a second wheel kick's actually pretty good. And if we find a meditate, double wheel kick will be absurd. And that's right, we can upgrade that one too. I actually think the second wheel kick is very good here. <laughs> How's it going, Theodore? Yeah, that silent run was, was pretty good. I can't believe we won that. That's right, the potential double wheel kick infinite. It's been done before. It's also really, really good against Gremlin Knob to have two of these. Bonk. B -b Bonk. And yeah, I'll miracle strike you, fool. Don't think you're immune. Just because you're big and ab colored. What is this? Fear Naval and Protect, and I just take nothing? And I can gamble his brew next turn if something goes really, really badly? I don't think it will, though. I don't see any reason to take damage here. Exactly. 57. Get ourselves a Nunchaku. If we play 10 attacks, gain 1 energy. Flying Sleeves is a retaining attack. Interesting. I actually don't hate this Flying Sleeves. I would like it to say plus. Hey, enjoy the holidays, Handwalk. Good to have you back. I am not at all worried about a bad split here. Not With two wheel, with two wheel kicks, we should be able to simply obliterate Slime Boss. Perk mod, did you hear about the dog that tried to become a golfer, kept landing his balls in the rough? Am I not a Judgment fan? I think Judgment can be really, really good in Watcher decks that have a bit of a setup time. And to some extent, this, this deck does qualify. I think with two wheel kicks, though, we don't need a card that kills a low health enemy, because wheel kick kills a low health enemy. Miromorphic says the Cloak class almost baits you to take the Flying Slaves, right? And, and with the Establishment, remember, it's going to be zero cost. Hit twice. I also like Flying Sleeves for interacting twice with Talk to the Hand, a card we already kind of want. I'm going to pick it up here. I'll give it a try. And I'll swap this Energy Potion for a Fire Potion going into Slime Boss. Yeah, with, with Strength or with having an actual Talk to the Hand, it'd be a lot better. I'm going to upgrade it over the Wheel Kick, and we'll, we'll see how it ends up playing. Flying Sleeves really is a card that does want an upgrade very, very badly. Just does so little damage without it. Retain, my child. Be retained. And thanks to Flying Sleeves, we get the kill. GG. All right, that was a good split. You know what makes a devo a uh, not a devotion. You know what makes an establishment deck way way better? Being able to take an extra turn whenever you want. Vault here. Vault lets us take a new turn. That new turn causes establishment to make anything in hand that retains cheaper. Plus we get to hold on to those cards. Could be a Sneko deck. Yeah, it could be, definitely. With two wheel kicks, absolutely, we'd take a Sneko. I'm also just quite happy paying for Vault. Uh, I think Flex Potion has got to be better than Fire Potion, considering we have a Tantrum. Flex Potion adds 20 damage to Tantrum, and then more besides. Gambler's Brew is too good to ignore, though. And there it is, the Black Star with the Wing Boots. That's pretty tempting. There's also Pandora's Box, which is very fantastic, transforming all eight of our starter cards. We haven't removed a single one. Atlas WW says, wouldn't Sneko kind of nullify establishment? Kind of. Cool thing is it still works. You know, if you retain a card, they get cheaper, regardless of their original costs. So three costs protect, which gets otherwise stuck in your hand, eventually becomes free, which is nice. But you don't get to keep that discount every time you draw the card, which is less nice.
Energy is also pretty nice. I don't think we would mind a Philosopher's Stone at all. Although I suspect we wouldn't need it. Yeah, this is this is a tough one. I think the Pandora's box is very, very good on average. Anything that we get with the retain keyword is going to be extra juicy. There's lots and lots of ways to improve on strikes and defends as Watcher. And with no removals taken yet, we'd really like to be able to get rid of this uh, starting set of cards. But with the wing boots, we could assuredly turn this black star into an absolute boatload of relics. And that too would be very absurd. I, th I don't think I could ignore the, the black star with wing boots interaction. This is easily going to be five additional relics in one act alone. Let's see what we get. Of course, we have to defeat those elites with what we have right now. And that could be challenging. Hmm. Okay, so I can reasonably do, let's say, four. Four elite in this act. Starting something like this. Probably want that extra fire. And then we can jump here and here, Take use two wing boots charges, get four elites. Could also opt to fight this burning elite instead. I don't know that we're necessarily set for that. Yeah, I think I think Pandora's box probably is, in the very short term especially, the Pandora's box is, is definitely huge. With any egg relic, I would have had to. Or even with ceramic fish, giving us an additional 72 gold, I would have also basically had to. Does the Path Highlighter work with Wing Boots? I don't think so. I don't think it's had any updates. Alternately, if it's, if it's had any updates, I haven't downloaded them. Since it's not done automatically. Kevner's thinks for five months, almost that half year. Heck yeah. Should be okay in the early combats. Some area damage would be good. I think we're okay without... I might be inclined to take, say, a Consecrate plus if I saw one, but I don't think we're going to need to. Let's start here. Hmm. Now there's a fun line. What if I just block for 42 and end this turn in Wrath? That's the power of Panic Button. We can go Vigilance, Eruption, Wheel Kick. We'll even have energy left afterwards, thanks to the Nunchaku here. And we'll deal 39. Yeah, if we can kill next turn, we won't take anything. We also have a Vault to draw into. There's a Tantrum Plus and a Wheel Kick Plus. I think our odds are pretty good. And we even got a Fear No Evil, so let's just, uh... One, we're playing this one, one way or the other. This is what, uh... 40 damage, so we bring the Parasite down to 7. I should be able to do that much damage. Seems pretty easy. Three defends and a curse, it could happen. How about Vault? Instead. Easy. Beautiful fire. This Empty Fist says plus on it. Hmm. That's pretty good. No block stays with Vault. Yes, Vault Vault and status effects for the player is a very strange interaction. There are some status effects that wear off at the end of your turn, like Strength Up and Dexterity Up. But there are others that don't. For example, Vulnerable won't, won't go down by one. You get to keep Wave of the Hand. You don't lose a, a no-block stack. It's a bit weird. 
Intangible will also stay if you vault, which is very, very powerful. I'm going to take this upgraded Empty Fist. I don't really like power potions that much on Watcher, so we'll keep the current potions. This is not ideal. Let's just bank some energy for a future turn. At least having Protect Plus in hand is good. A nine by two, no problem, no problem. Twenty-eight, twenty-four, twelve. Forty plus twenty-four. Brutal. Just brutal. Don't want any of this. Nothing that says retain, nothing that says plus. Let's just roll into our shop with 459 gold. <laughs> and consider our options. Hmm. Not often that I consider purchasing Peace Pipe. It's really expensive. Uh, and it's giving you something that you can otherwise purchase with gold. So you have to either be purchasing the removals alongside the peace pipe or have an additional, have, have a plan of using it a lot. But that is one interesting option for us here. The peace pipe alongside other card removals could allow us to purge the starter cards from this deck very quickly. We could potentially combine that with lesson learn. Can I buy all three? That's the really big question. Three sixteen plus seventy five plus eighty seven. Now we're a little bit short of all three cards. Let's see then. There's a few upgrades I'd like. Hmm. Trip is pretty interesting. Zero cost apply vulnerable. That's really energy efficient for us here. Actually, really like Trip currently. Definitely want to remove one of our defend cards. I guess the question is do we purchase the lesson learned? For 87 gold, it's pretty hard to say no to. So I don't think I'm buying Peace Pipe. I think it's just too much money to pay for. Could take the Eternal Feather for healing at rest sites. That's passable. We're going to be visiting another shop later. Possibly later this act, although I'm likely to warp to this elite instead. Could even go to this shop if I really wanted to. So yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, lesson learned trip card remove feels right to me. Lesson learned may be somewhat difficult to land initially. But once it once it gets us a few upgrades, it's gonna do a, a ton of work. Note that this will eventually upgrade our establishment to be drawn on turn one, which might not be something that we want, but is gonna happen one way or the other. Alright, pretty easy. Combat from these two. Uh, don't do it like that. Hmm. Probably just need to take a little bit of damage here. Could do Furnival Eruption, then Wheel Kick. That seems kind of suicidal, though. I could kill the Centurion with a Flex Potion here, but I'd really rather not use the Flex Potion right now. So I think it's just going to be Eruption, then Wheel Kick. We can Miracle the Fury Weevil. Or something else besides. Could also Wheel Kick first. Don't enter Wrath. Do way less damage. Let's 
but probably block for more. I agree, yeah. The Flex Potion has uh, three slavers name on it. It sure does. It's got Red Slaver written right on it, actually. It's for him and him alone. So possible things we could draw into that would be good. Trip, Panic Button. Actually, Empty Fist, too. Hmm. I can also just end up Wheel Kick Defend. Alright, let's see what happens here. Oh, we do get Empty Fist. Okay. Uh, how much damage is that now? We can do 8 plus 9 plus 28. That's quite a bit. And I could even defend afterwards. I'll take it. That's unfortunate. Mystic will have to heal again next turn. Centurion could block again. I, I don't need to do anything excessive here. We got Vault coming up as well. Yeah, exactly. They don't do they don't do jack. They don't do diddly. Terrifying. Six, so we can do this. Mystic can never attack twice in a row. At least not on this ascension level, she can't. And we want to be able to lesson learn her. We'd also like to set up the Nunchaku, but uh, I failed to do that. I'll just take the upgrade. Get a duplication potion, letting us play a card twice. And if we wanted a zero cost attack, here are the options. Consecrate and weave. I suppose I'm pretty okay with a consecrate, especially since we have lesson learn to potentially upgrade it. And I have a nun uh, Nunchaku. Yeah, I'll take a consecrate here. Akron says, do I consider the slavers to be the hardest elite in the game? For the point at which you face them? I'd actually, I'd probably have to give the title to Kremlin Knob. Kremlin Knob is a very simple fight. It's a, a straight up damage race, but that damage race is pretty difficult to win, especially on uh, silent and defect. But uh, in Act 2, slavers are the one I fear most, just because they do so much damage on turn 1. There's really very little you can do to uh, to stop them. Oh man, upgrade all strikes and defends. That means that the lesson learned is immediately going to start upgrading only the premium cards, the non-strike and defends. It's seven free upgrades, seven less lessons I have to learn. Or we could remove one, which makes one less lesson we have to learn. But I think the performance increase in these upcoming elite fights, right? We have Black Star. We need to be able to beat elites right now. Seven free upgrades. Even if they are the worst cards in the deck. It's definitely going to help. It's definitely going to help. Here they are, the three slavers. The gentlemen I did not want to see. Not exactly an ideal turn one, but I think with the Flex Potion, this is still enough to kill our nemesis, Red Slaver. Let's see. So if I Flex Potion, this would do 11 twice plus 19. So 22 plus 19. 
41, this would be 51, so yes, I have to play the strike. We have to empty fist, flying sleeve, strike, consecrate to kill. But it works. I'm left with no energy, so we keep Protect Miracle in hand, block for two, take 18 damage. We keep the Protect Plus, so I think that means we take 18 damage and then we win the fight. We get to keep the Dupe Potion, too. And we'll assuredly lesson learned later in the fight as well. That sounds good enough to me. I don't really see a... I don't think this would be a particularly good Gambler's Brew put turn, and I don't see a dupe pot line that helps me. I guess we could dupe pot the protect. We're not being weakened to this turn. Wait, do I need to play the strike? Let me redo the math. So 22. Plus 19. Oh yeah, plus 10. Yes, yeah, so 51. Actually, no, we do kill. We do kill the... The Red Slaver. I think what I was doing is looking at the Blue Slaver's health and thinking that's how much health the Red Slaver had. We don't kill the Blue Slaver. We'd be one short, but we do kill the Red Slaver, which means I can then Miracle and Protect. If I Consecrate, Empty Fist, Flying Sleeves, Miracle Protects. Then we kill Red Slaver and take basically no damage this turn. That seems like the best of both worlds. One block. But then, more than one block. It'll be pretty hard to lesson learned here, huh? Have to dupe pot. We'll be back for it. Looks like we might need to take 16 ish this turn, unless we draw a panic button. I put tantrum into the draw pile. Probably. Twelve more. Less okay with that, but here we are. Simply Vault. You go Establishment, Fear and Evil, Defend. Okay, Simply Vault. Uh, 36 damage means we wouldn't be able to wheel kick next turn. Hmm. If I play no damage, then I... Might have to take some more. I guess I'm okay resting at this rest site. Take four here. Actually, you no, know, take five. We can bring him close to. Lesson learn range here. Okay, now flying sleeves will always kill if we eat it too. And we'll have Nunchaku on nine for the next fight. Plus five, no need for panic button here. Vigilance plus five, we'll take one and then we get our lesson. Low class really made that bearable. Shame on you for being on the bottom of the deck, lesson learned. But thanks for upgrading Trip. If we fight Gremlin Leader, I'll be very happy with that. I'm also very happy with Captain's Boot thingy, giving us 18 block on the third turn. Ink Bottle to draw us a card whenever we play 10. Yeah, we could jump straight to the Burning Elite. Knowing it's not Burning Slavers, I'd be more tempted, but I'm still kind of afraid of that. And a useful potion as well as Wave of the Hand Plus, which is insane with Cloak Class, let me tell you. Guaranteed to apply two weak into all enemies at minimum. Works great with Vault. Already has an upgrade on it. 
And that's pretty good. I would not say that plus strength Book of Stabbing is necessarily death, although it could be with the wrong draw order. There's, We could do something like dupe pot a wheel kick um, when in wrath with vulnerable for 120 damage, and that would just instantly kill the Book of Stabbing. But that would require some favorable draws. Much rather rest up here, have a little bit of extra health to work with, and try to continue lesson learning in these fights. Let's have a schnooze. I think I'd actually be more afraid of plus health book of stabbing. In any case, it's actually the gremlin leader that we must face with the gremlin minions. Who could give us some trouble here. Get this in play. I want to kill the shield gremlin. Cool thing about the captain's wheel is that we can use vault on turn two to get the block. Because it changes the turn timing. So yes, the burning elite would have been gremlin leader with some uh, some buff. I'm going to keep my miracle for now. Don't get attacked. Good. Very good. Let us be wrath then. That Frank bottle. Keep the flying sleeves until we have the trip down. It's free after all. Don't get attacked. Good. If I play the flying sleeves, I'll draw a new card. I suppose that's okay, too. It was Vault. That's less okay. It's probably fine. It was fine. Still looking to learn a lesson. That might be difficult to do. Grum Leader could choose to attack us at any time, and if they do so, we could suffer greatly. So let's be a little careful here. Okay, could kill, but again, don't want to. We want to learn our lesson. And the lesson was that Consecrate is upgraded. Get two very ridiculous relics side by side here. First one, Mummy Hand makes a card in hand become free when we play a power. Currently only one power in the deck, but that's sure to change soon. As well as a Pocket Watch, drawing us extra cards if we play three or fewer cards during our turn. There's also one of the cards we've been looking for, Talk to the Hand. It's gonna be great with Flying Sleeves as well as, of course, Tantrum giving us block whenever a foe is struck. Also, combo is exceedingly good with Wave of the Hand. That's right, we get our card counter. Gotta love the card counter. Almost don't want Recites anymore. Almost. Juzu Bracelet, more like Euzu Bracelet. Get out of here. So if I'm jumping over here, I could avoid this rest site now. I'm fine. So we'll use two wing boots charges to get one extra elite here. Can't use one for one. It's got to be two. I'll do it. No shop. Unfortunately, the shop comes at the cost of an elite. So no, no shop. Gonna make the vault cheaper. Oof. 
Eruption. Talk to the hand. Strike. Draw eight cards next turn. The extra draw is going to make the cloak class even better, by the way, which is pretty absurd. So my enemy's not getting an extra turn. Which means their block won't go away. So I don't want to play the tantrum here, because it would give the snake plant too much block. Basically. 45 damage. Good lord. That's the worst setup on Nunchaku Ink Bottle ever. Dang it. For some reason, I thought the enemy had 22 health. Uh, actually, do I want a Foresight? Let's sort of our turn scry three. Don't want to study, although the insights are cute. Scry three lets us shuffle through attacks and such. Combos nicely with vaults. I think with Mummified Hand, it's probably worth considering. We'll pick it up. All right. Next elite is, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's going to cost me an upgrade in the long run. Um, bit of a brain fart though, absolutely, absolutely. Hmm. The right output from attack potion, I could get a kill here. This is twenty-one plus twelve. Let's see what this contains. Yeah, that'll kill. Or I could carve, but I have to pay for the smite. Me too, Red Slaver, me too. Take two damage to play the establishment? Doesn't seem like a deal worth taking. Not today, friend. Not today. Can block with Panic Button this turn. We get block from Captain's Wheel next turn. That's not affected by the no block debuff. So, I have no downside, you fool. Also, you're dead. We get another boat thingy. Now we get block on turn two as well as turn three. And a dream catcher giving us card reward when we rest. And a Sands of Time Plus, which is pretty sweet with establishment, quite frankly. Already got the establishment. Let's do it. All right, we'll take one event at the end of the act. So here is our fourth elite this act. The Book of Stabbing Return. Let's go Establishment, Wave, Defend, which applies not one, not two, but four turns of weakness. Simply glorious. So deliberately choosing to play three cards there for Pocket Watch. You'll see me do that a lot. Stop my turn at three cards. So that we can get uh, more card draw on the following turn. Let's do Talk to the Hand. I don't know that I want to play this Strike, even though I could. Because it'll give me energy back that I don't actually want to spend this turn. We'll do that next turn. Yeah, we're starting to get a, a, a truly absurd interaction between the Pocket Watch and the Cloak Clasp and all that. Sands of Time is now free, by the way. Unfortunately, we didn't draw the Tantrum, but that can change. Dang. Pretty hard to lesson learn like this, huh? If I duped the sands of time, I could. It's fine, we got protect in hand. 
I'll just draw back to it. Easy. Oh, wait. Not easy at all. The wheel kick would have... No, it was wheel kick miracle lesson learned. That's correct. Shoot. Did that to myself. Hmm, that might make it pretty difficult to actually learn the lesson here. Only Consecrate had been here. But they underestimated just how many cards I could draw in one turn. And so the lesson was learned the whole time. Easy. We get a potion belt, so we can hold even more duplication potions, and we get bronze scales to do damage back to heart, and maybe any other foe that decides to hit me. These are passable, but not required. Bites? Maybe if I hadn't upgraded all of the strikes at this point, I might take bites. As it stands, no thank you, vampires. Don't need your help today. I'm actually going to recall. We have more freedom in the final act. Against Champ, the plan is pretty straightforward and simple. We want to play the powers, get our retaining cards to zero cost, and then do a whole bunch of damage to Champ all at once. Shouldn't be too bad. Let's try, chump. Attempting to wave tantrum? Let's do it. Enjoy your 12... Twelve turns of being stinky. So, first stage of this fight is just get Champ close to half health. When Champ drops below half health, he'll become very angry. But we can hurt him right up until that point with no consequence whatsoever. Exceedingly promising turn. Just a shame that we're weakened. to the lesson learned, of course. We've done it now. Glorious. Spirit Shield is an absurd amount of block for this deck. So that's worth thinking about. This is like 40 block. We're actually kind of at the maximum of number of cards we want to retain. And we're more thinking about just cycling through over and over. Yeah, let's take a Spirit Shield. Three block per card in hand. If we can find a Meditate, we're going to be in really, really good shape. 
But even if we can't, I think taking some additional energy seems pretty good to me. Since we've got a lesson learned, there's no shame in a fusion hammer here. Allowing us to rest at all the remaining rest sites. Could instead go for Coffee Dripper, no resting. Instead, we have to upgrade, but we'll run out of upgrades pretty soon, so I don't think we want to do that. Spirit Shield is affected by Dexterity P players, so it, this one's a little counterintuitive. Spirit Shield says gain three block per each card in your hand. And while Dexterity doesn't affect the block per card, it is added to your total. So say you've got five cards in hand, Spirit Shield will block for 15. If you have one point of Dexterity, it's not four per card for 20. It's three per card, 15 plus one Dexterity for a total of 16. And Spirit Shield is in fact shut off by the Panic Button debuff. If you stance dance more than one turn, once per turn on average, the flower is better. Currently, we don't do that. We only have two cards out of 28 that put us into calm stance. So the flower is not going to be more than once per turn. It might be twice in one turn, but it's not going to be on average more than once per turn. I think I'd rather have the hammer. But yes, a meditate could change that for sure. You learn something, a lesson, one might say. Ah, uh, we should have saved all of our Wing Boots charges for this act. Well, we should have saved two. I don't think it matters much. Okay, so we get to use one for an extra elite. That's the important part. We get to do three elites this act. Where are the shops at? Hmm. I guess we don't need rest sites, actually. Probably want to go to this store. Means... Take these two elites. Could go to a rest site if I wanted to. I don't think I actually want to. So we do this. Jump with wing boots here. And rest here if we want to. That should work well. We'll get all of our deck upgraded. We'll get to look at a bunch more cards. We'll get a bunch more money. We need to kick butt. All good. In my book. Free block. Supplies anyway, nerd. Easy. Bit late for Mantra in this deck, I think. Cut through fate's reasonable. Not required, but reasonable. I'll pass. Halt, I believe, applies all of. Halt only activates wave of the hand one time. That I know. So it's block all, it must be block all at once. Again, often seeing me play only three cards for pocket watch. That's why I didn't play strike there. have so much card draw on this deck. Truly absurd. Hmm. Got lots of block. Okay, so we can... We can KO this fool. Probably do want a second talk to the hand. 
That way we don't necessarily need something like a mental fortress. Upgrade all cards, you say? See, the thing is, they're already upgraded. I could take money for a curse, but uh, the cur Actually, normalities aren't that bad with Pocket Watch, quite frankly, but I don't have any real use for the money. Guess we could try going here. But I'll have to fight the Burning Elite with one normality at least? That's pretty scary. When instead I could get a rare relic, another card reward, more money, and another upgrade right away? That sounds a lot more reasonable. Usually the safe pick here to go for the boss fight. Definitely not required, but definitely the safe pick. Yeah, I'm gonna vault here. Be a better setup turn. That's more like it's power, power. And yeah, put this in the draw pile. I'll be in round. We'll be fine. Get 18 free block plus then some. It's a mere 12 by 6 after all. What's the worst that could happen? See, nothing wrong. Even need to play panic button? Tragic. Really, really appreciating our scry four per turn power. That's been actually a lot better than I thought it would be. This has been such a trusty lesson learned. Never upgrading itself. By the way, we just got our hands on ice cream, allowing us to conserve energy between turns. If we want another stance change, inner pieces here. Fasting is also kind of interesting, giving us strength and dex, but less energy each turn. With ice cream, I could see fasting being pretty good, actually. Hmm. Although we're already able to do so much damage. I'm going to take the inner piece instead. Little kick will change your intent. Better. Better. One more card. Probably want to play the Miracle early on now, although the extra card in hand is a, an interesting dilemma. Sometimes I want it, sometimes I don't. It's fine. Should have done that earlier. Good. I 
took the fasting, right? No, I didn't. Okay. No need for halt then. Mr. Doc MC Dr. Pepsi is Dr. Pepsi says, is there a strategy to the writhing mass fight? The way I like to think of it is it's a fight you have control over. So anytime the writhing mass changes their attack intent, they do, to, do so to a new random one. There are five different attacks. Lowest damage one inflicts vulnerable and weakness. Um, there's a 16 damage one that gives block to the parasite. There's a times three attack that does pretty big damage. A single big hit for 38 that does the most damage. And lastly, the big swirling debuff that looks like this inflicts a curse upon you. Anytime you strike the writhing mass for attack damage, you reroll the current one to one of the other four at random. The odds aren't quite equal for all four outcomes. But the gist of it is, uh, my usual strategy for Writhing Mass is leave one attack in hand unplayed. You want to play your attacks to deal damage, but you don't want to get stuck on an attack intent you can't deal with. So attacks are to be used to reroll the Writhing Mass's intent, basically whenever possible. Since the Writhing Mass never increases strength or anything like that, the fight is in your favor, the player's favor, the longer it goes on. So there's no shame in even outright skipping your turn or just playing no damage on a turn in order to get the Writhing Mass to perform the attack that you want. Definitely want this to be a three card turn. Let's do Trip Tantrum. Nice and simple. Look at all that energy we get to bank. Oh, jeez. Finally, the lesson learned is upgraded. Yeah, another, another way to phrase, as soon as you can handle what it's doing, stop attacking. Third upgraded wheel kick. I actually kind of dig that. It's card draw. With the ice cream, this deck really likes card draw. Take one more. Last one. Having trouble thinking of any X cost watcher cards. That's because they're all terrible. Collect, Conjure Blade. I think those are the only two. Double block. I guess I'll take a little bit of damage here. Four is acceptable. Within acceptable parameters. One energy here. Casual 24 turns of weakness inflicted upon the giant head. Why not, right? Why not? on this turn pretty easily. Is there anything left unupgraded in the deck, actually? Establishment. Wait, Establishment was the last card? Amazing. We have every card upgraded except Establishment. 
So I could choose to stop here if I want. Oh, and panic button. All right, well, we have to find out. Quick, remove the lesson learned. Yeah, no, no, no. We got to give it a chance to upgrade panic button. To, to, to show its loyalty to us. Here goes, lesson learned. Do your work. Good job. All right, now we remove it. Get an incense burner, giving us intangible every six turns. Ragnarok is pretty sweet. We'll skip it, though. We'll take an Ambrosia over a Fear Potion, I suppose. Instant Divinity. Collect with Ice Cream. Not as good as you want it to be, trust me. It, it does majorly mess with our uh, with our pocket watch. It's not actually necessarily a bad thing to have the establishment upgraded. It's partially for meme value that I want it, it alone to be excluded here. Just too good, man. Madnesses. What about madness wheel kicks? Actually, Madness sounds really good here. All right, Madness, you're in. Lesson learned is back on duty. Hmm. Might be a Colos potion. And a Greed is cute. Just does good damage this turn. That's all I need it to be. It gets played too, of course. play this, but we're actually full blocking. Maybe should have played trip, though. You know, food for thought. have a lot of control over what the madnesses work on at the moment, which is a bit of an issue. That's okay. Fart. Don't want these cards. No thanks. Not today. I will, however, take a shuriken, giving us strength for three attacks played in one turn. And oh yeah, we're going to harvest another four relics from the next couple of floors, too. Just because we can. Daddy OBC says, how much health loss against... You know, how much damage dealt to Transient uh, indicates that your deck is ready for heart. I like to think that if you can get the Transient at or below half health, deal about 500 damage. It's a good indicator that you're on track for the heart fight. 
Wing boots for six? We don't have enough charges to do that. There's no way to get six here. Only got one use left. And if we use it wrong and don't go to the Burning Elite, we will perish. And we could have optimized Transine a little bit better there, too. I agree. Take the strength, take the strength. That made madness free. Okay. This makes inner peace free. Consecrate will deal 18 to all. You died of thorns. lose this Sands of Time and this Madness for now. We need cards to do stuff right now. These cards don't do stuff right now. But blocking does. I'll take it. Hmm. Good enough for me. Got it. One madness upgraded. There's the sundial. Double madness sundial wheel kick. Not really going to be a thing for us, but it could be. We're also offered a mental fortress block per stance change. Honestly, I think this deck can do without it. Although it would help a little bit. I'm going to say no to a mental fortress. You might think we want to battle him because the smites retain and therefore become free the following turn, but they're going to result in big hand clog for us, taking up too much of our hand space. We won't be able to draw enough cards. I don't like it much. Okay, so do I need this rest site? Um, I'd like for this run to last less time, so I'll rest here. You even get a card reward. Who are you and what have you done with Baylor? How dare you turn down a mental fortress? It's true. Normally a card I'm all about as a watcher block strategy, but here? Here and now, I'm actually not thoroughly convinced. Take two. Block this way. No need to vault here. Let's draw first, though. Madness. Madness this. Cool. Thanks, panic button. Actually, don't even need you. Just gonna end the turn. Keep these all cheapened. Get lots of energy and draw a new. Six block. 
And a vault. You'd love to see it. No patience for lesson learned in this fight. I don't care. Get a Vajra for plus one strength. Bag of marbles for vulnerable on turn one. The emerald key arriveth. And here's Deceive if we do want one more retaining card or a bit more help blocking. I don't think we do. Hello and welcome, Scataboosh. Watcher is definitely one of the trickiest characters to play. A couple pieces of advice I can give for this character. Number one, offense is her greatest asset. Watcher can do tons and tons of damage if you flood her deck with attack cards and rely on your Wrath Stance to deal double damage. So early on in a Watcher run, I recommend adding attack cards, upgrading those attack cards, particularly upgrading Eruption, uh, as well as removing your defense before you remove any strikes. Another piece of advice I can give for Watcher, learn thy enemy. Take some time to familiarize yourself with what the foes of the Spire can do as you come across them, the attack patterns that they have. If you can know when your foe is going to attack you on a future turn, or not attack you on a future turn, you can give yourself more opportunities to safely enter Wrath Stance to deal that double damage. So knowing what your opponent's going to do is a, a critical skill for Watcher. Especially for the bosses. It can make such a big difference for her. Nice Akka Beko there. I guess maybe one last piece of advice. Don't get, build the deck too large. Watch her more than any other character uh, is suited to having small, refined decks of cards that are really all about doing one thing really, really well. And watch her more than anyone else excels at this. Yeah, he says having 33 cards. Look, this runs a little different, okay? Just trust me. Do so much damage now. Oh, cause Shuriken, that's right, okay. Amazing, we got both Madnesses upgraded. Establishment still doesn't say Plus on it. This lesson learned knows. It knows we don't want it. Hey, no arms the beef. Defect also really, really challenging. Defect is very much a, a setup based character. Defect excels with a ton of powers, orbs, and shenanigans in play, but getting to that state can be really difficult. There's just so many enemies in the Spire that just have this danged propensity to kill you while you're pro trying to play uh, your defragments and capacitors. Defect needs to pair defensive and orb scaling options alongside what we call in the Spire community front-loaded output. Cards that have a high immediate impact. Don't sleep on cards like Auto Shields, Leap, Equilibrium, Reinforced Body, or attack cards like Melter, Doom and Gloom, Rip and Tear. Any, any card with a big number on it that you can play for instant value is, is well worth incorporating into a defect deck because you need to be able to deal with shorter, fast encounters just as much as you need to be able to deal with long-term bosses. Wallop is here, a little bit late, but not too late. Strange Spoon would allow us to keep... The Madnesses and the Talk to the Hands. Interesting, and the Vault. And the Panic Button, that's a pretty cool Strange Spoon. Cards that exhaust when played will instead discard half the time. I like it, I like it a lot. 
Legions ask, what's better between Talk to the Hand and Rage on Ironclad? I tend to say Talk to the Hand. Talk to the Hand is a debuff that lasts for the whole fight, whereas Rage only lasts for one turn, and that's a, a critical difference between those two. The fact that Talk to the Hand sticks around for the whole fight is way too good. We are rich as heck. I'm gonna buy the Legendary Strike Remove. Didn't I have two spoon runs yesterday? I did, and now I'm adding a third to my collection, almost ready to have people over for dinner. Keep the rest of that money since there is... Oh my, hello. Get in here. Since there is one more... One more shop coming up. My spoon is too big. My tantrum does too much damage. Jeez. I'm just gonna end the turn here. We're intangible next turn. Let's just take one this turn, be fine next turn. It's so nice being able to keep all that energy with ice cream. Right, let's leave the establishments. There's Omni Science. Double Foresight sounds fun. Stay intangible when you fall, right? That's right. Establishment got upgraded, alas. Tragic accident did occur. Madness around? Keep making all my cards free. Sounds good to me. One, two, three, four, five with the tantrum. Go talk to the hand. Tantrum. Fly a million turns a weekend. Leave wrath. And the turn. The free strike. Free strikes and you're out. We're intangible for the big hit. Easy.
bonk. I'll set up incense burner for Act 4. I don't think it's going to matter for this fight. Unless we're gonna just going to crush these nerds. Attention nerds, prepare to be crushed. Foresight again seems like it's a very, very good thing for us, so let's go ahead and do that. Eight scry per turn, please. And thank you. Let's remove some artifact layers, shall we? More like fartifact. Got him. Fortunately, these madnesses don't have any very good don't have any great targets here. Oh well. So my face. Good. I think we can do 132 damage. Right? Absolutely. Easily, in fact. Jeez, we do tons of damage with every attack. All right, Omni Science has been upped. So we want to end this fight with the Incense Burner on four. That way we'll be intangible for turn two of the dreaded Shield and Spear encounter in Act Four. Second turn of that fight is one of the nastiest in the Spire, so having preparation for it uh, with the Incense Burner is one of the easiest ways to deal with that fight. There's a, a number of other things we can do, but I think a, a well-maneuvered incense burner will just trivialize it for us. So not this turn, but next turn we want to kill. I also want the ink bottle and nunchaku to be as high as they can be. So 499. That's both our area code and the correct setup of relics for this watch a run as we go into Act 4. Onward. We sleep, getting one last card reward. Prostrate plus actually kind of decent now that I have Damaru. Let's do it. And one final shop at which to spend our money. Art of War could give us additional energy if we choose not to play any attacks on our turn. Pen Nib doubles the damage of every 10th attack we play, whatever that might be. Or Sling of Courage to start us out with strength during elite fights. Can remove a card here. Might want to remove the lesson learned, as we have upgraded at this point every card in the deck, even Establishment. If only the sling worked in the heart fight. Alas, it only works during elite fights, so not the heart, just the fight prior to the heart. And I don't think we're going to need help against them. <laughs> remove the prostrate that we just added. Brilliant. I'm going to remove the lesson learned. Be gone, fiend. <laughs> Add an art of war. And we could swap a potion, maybe power potion or stance potion or block potion. I think we're fine, though. So I'm going to leave with the remainder of our cash intact. 
All lessons have been successfully learned. This is what we wanted, not getting attacked by shield on turn one. We simply block this. Next turn we're intangible, who cares? And then the world. Go Foresight. Trip. Wave. Can talk to the hand over here. Since the shield is what we have to deal with next turn. Weaken them both. Maybe we should have played that earlier in the turn. Doesn't matter. And we have Vault this turn. Even better. Perfect. I see you're already familiar with Vaulty Spoon here. Very well. Double Tantrum? We want to end with Incense Burner on two or four, so I don't want to kill the spear this turn, even though I think I could. I don't want to do that. That helps, though. Actually, Incense Burner on 3 might be better. That allows me to play Vault without disrupting the cycle of the Incense Burner. 2 or 3 is optimal, going into Heart. General, uh, sorry, 3 or 4 is optimal, going into Heart. That'll prevent either the second or first attack in the first cycle. And essentially, we increment the Incense Burner by 1 when we play the card Vault. So we want to set it up on 3. That way it'll work whether or not we Vault early on. Dander, thanks for 33 months. We got a Mango and a Kunai. It's a pretty absurd pair of last relics. This Blackstar was crazy, crazy good. We got so many very good relics. Unupgraded cards, not today, nerds. Not today. Not much of a turn one, huh? Suppose I'm okay with that. I think even with a really bad draw, we're completely fine in this fight. I have two duplication potions. Play the miracle now. Oh. Uh, so I'm gonna do that, actually. That sounds pretty good. Duplication Potion, Omniscience. Actually, I can even do something particularly hilarious. Yeah, we can also indeed dupe what's duped. If I drink not one, but two Duplication Potions, our next two cards are played twice this turn. So the first card that gets duped is the Omniscience. The second card that gets duped is the first card being duped by Omniscience. Two duplications equals a tripling. The first card gets played three times. So we could indeed stack 15 Talk to the Hand. Um, or I can get 12 Scry per turn and a bunch of Talk to the Hand, which sounds even funnier. Let's do that. Omni... Foresight. And talk to the hand.
and might as well play these. So, at the start of your turn, scry 12. Means we're basically never gonna draw a status card this entire fight. I get to look at 12 cards in order and choose essentially which one of these that I want to draw. I want to draw Vault, that's what I want to draw. Let's get Vigilance and Inner Peace and Prostrate. Thank you very much. There's Vault. If I Vault now, we become intangible. Inner Peace Vault. Let's just Inner Peace Vault. Get Pocket Watch. Yeah, Fear Noble Vault, excuse me. Keep the Vault, too. There's Incense Burner lined up successfully. Uh, lose this, this, this. Keep the Sands of Time. Go oh, Tantrum, Madness, Wheel Kick, Talk to the Hand, Trip. And some other stuff. Ooh, and Wave of the Hand. So go Wave. Trip, talk, madness now, hits the wheel kick, good. <laughs> right, it's the only card in the draw pile, so do I want to draw that again? Gives me a ton of block next turn, and gives me a strength right now. I'll do it. Although it ruins my scry. No, I don't want one card in the draw pile. Because if I put Tantrum in the draw pile, then I scry Tantrum. If I don't put Tantrum in the draw pile, I get to scry the top 12 cards of the deck. So definitely don't play it. Because I want to scry 12 here. Prostrate is back. Are we divine already? We are. Nice. Give me talk to the hand again. Wheel kick. Don't need the madness this turn. So just one, two, three, four, and a mystery fifth card. Cool. Who even needs an Ambrosia when you have the power of Frostray? Already got 23 turns a week, and that seems like it's probably enough, huh, Mr. Hart? If I vault again, our intangibility is not going to be useful. We're not going to last that long anyway. Okay, that's fine. Let's keep vault, vigilance, inner peace. My hand is full. It's actually no use to vaulting because we've capped on damage, so when you vault, the heart's damage cap does not reset. There's no benefit to doing that. I think we'll just go ahead and kill it. Keep wheel kick, wheel kick, and nothing else. So much effective card draw. GG. Goodbye, Mr. Heart. Goodbye. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.